Hello and welcome to Tap That MTG, the show where we tell you everything we know about magic that's probably wrong, but fun to talk about. Today we are bringing you another deep dive into the Forgotten Realms pre-con commander decks. We are very excited about this. In this video, we're going to break down all the cards in this deck and talk to you about what this deck is meant to do and how to use it. And then uh, if you wait, hang out with us till the end, we'll offer some suggestions on how you could possibly tweak this deck and make it even better or more mm -hmm. fun for you or whatever. So, Leslie, tell us about this commander and what this deck is meant to do. There be dragons is what this meant to, is de this deck is meant to do. Uh, so we have another dragon deck coming at you. It's not too unlike any of the other dragon decks, but we do have a new dragon commander, which is kind of an interesting one. Uh, Rondis, Rage of Ancients, is a dragon barbarian. So he's a dragonborn. If you play D&D, &D, you'll be familiar with that race. He's a 5-4, so he's pretty cool already but he has this fun ability that kind of came out when dinosaurs came out called enrage and whenever he uh, is dealt damage you get to create a 5-4 red and green dragon spirit creature token um, when this creature deals damage sacrifice it so you can keep it on the battlefield you can just build up a dragon army it doesn't just stay until the end of a turn but as soon as it creates damage or it does damage, whether that be through blocking or attacking, you're going to sacrifice it. So lots of versatility there. Uh, the other benefit, though, here is whenever you roll one or more dice, you may have Vronda steal one damage to itself. <laughs> so uh, taking advantage of those dice abilities and just creating five, four dragons and going wide is really kind of fun. It's the, the point of this deck. You're just going to hopefully play a lot of dragons and kill them really, really fast. So yeah, we uh, will break this down for you. But what about uh, the meat and guts of this deck? What's in it? So as expected, as far as mana curve goes, this is a dragon deck. So dragons tend to cost a little bit more mana. So this deck is a little bit to the high end of the curve, but not too bad. Um, it's sitting at uh, four cards at the one mana cost slot, nine at two, 14 at three, and then 11 at four, five at, or sorry, seven at five, and then 16 at six and above, which is not surprising with the dragon deck for yeah. sure. As far as colors go, it's got uh, 28 red cards and 18 green cards, uh, eight colorless and seven multicolor. So it's very much in those gruel colors, red and green. Then we've got 27 creatures, again, not surprising. And then we have nine artifacts, which are probably the mana rocks, right? Mm -hmm. And then eight enchantments and 17 instances and sorceries that are hopefully going to help you keep your dragons around, boost up your dragons, all sorts of nasty stuff. But we evaluate this deck on a formula that Leslie and I like to use. Leslie, can you tell us a little bit about that formula? I would love to tell you about the formula that we use. So as we always like to say, this is a formula, not the formula. There's lots <laughs> of them out there. Uh, but this is the one that we tend to like to evaluate. It's very balanced. It gets you kind of a mid-range, mid-level deck. Uh, it's also tends to be right around what Wizards uses to make all of their pre-cons. So um, we evaluate based on that. So in this formula, we have one commander. We have about 15 cards in ramp to get you where you need to be, which is important in this one. We have 15 cards for removal. Uh, card draw 13, high impact cards are gonna be at around 12. And then other cards would be things that support your commander, support your high impact cards, or just get you there or fill up kind of the balance of the deck. As far as land goes, we always recommend around 34, but that can go up and down by four or five if you need to. A lot of the commander decks that come out come out with about 38 or 39, um, and that gives you some ability to tweak a little bit in that, that uh, area, but it also sometimes is necessary to have that many. So um, yeah, that's the formula that we break down, um, and we will go through all the cards in that order. So what's our first section, Shauna? 
our first section is those uh, ramp and mana generator type cards. So the formula said, uh, Leslie said it was 15, and this deck has about 11. Um, a couple of the first cards here, the first one here, Dragon Lord Servant for one and a red. It's a 1-3 Goblin Shaman, which isn't really officially a um, ramp, but it, um, it says that dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast. So it kind of is ramp because it takes mm -hmm. one of the mana off of those big dragon boys. Mm -hmm. So that's going to help you. And hopefully you can get Dragon Speaker Shaman out as well for one and two red. He is a Dragon Spells cost two less to cast. So this is a nice little mana reduction that you have in the Dragon deck. And Definitely. should probably be in any Dragon deck. <laughs> and then of course we've got Cultivate, which is a really great mana ramping card for two and a green. It's a sorcery that lets you search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal them, put one on the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand, then shuffle. So it's a great way to get two mana out mm -hmm. at once. Yeah, an early game when you just you don't you don't have enough to play those dragons, yeah. you're gonna play something like rampant growth as well for one in a red or so one in a red, one in a green. You're just gonna pay those two and search your library for a basic land card, get it onto the battlefield on on whichever turn it is, and just have that extra mana so you can get your dragons out faster. Arcane Signet, of course, is included in pretty much every commander deck as it comes out now. It is a two cost artifact that you can tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Yep, in Commander Sphere, add one mana of any color, your commander's color identity also. Uh, but this one also has the benefit of sacrificing it to draw a card. So later in the game, when you don't need as much mana, now you can draw that card that you need. Then we've got the Signet for this deck, which is the Gruel Signet. For two, it is an artifact that lets you pay one and tap it and add both the red and the green mana. And everyone loves a Soul Ring for one. You can tap it to add two colorless. This is actually a really great ramp and is pretty much in every commander deck. Yeah. Then we have this cool new card that's called a component pouch for three, an artifact that lets you tap it and remove a component counter from the component couch, uh, pouch, <laughs> couch. <laughs> you can add two mana of different colors. So that's really awesome for this deck. But how do you get component counters on? Well, you can tap this and roll a d20. So there we are rolling dice, which helps with our commander. Yep. And we can get, uh, for one to nine, you put a component counter on the pouch or 10 to 20 you put two of those counters on the pouch so mm -hmm. really really great way to get some uh, extra mana and your commander things happening yeah so cloth the unrivaled ancient is a legendary creature dragon for four four you say but you're ramping up and this guy costs seven you're kind of past the ramp stage aren't you <laughs> um but he does have flying in haste and when uh he attacks you add x mana in any combination of colors where x is the total power of attacking creatures spend this mana only to cast spells and until the end of turn you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end so you're gaining it in combat which normally any of that mana would disappear at the end of that phase but turn or in your second main phase now you have all this mana if you've attacked with a bunch of big creatures that you can then just really overwhelm so a lot of dragon decks out there or big beefy creature decks out there are kind of like i'm gonna I'm gonna build i'm gonna build i'm gonna build i get some a couple good things out there and all of a sudden the board is full so that is the hope with this deck mm -hmm. definitely Wild Endeavor for two, or sorry, four and two green. It's a sorcery that you can roll two D4 and choose one result. You get to create a number of three, three green beast creature tokens equal to that result. And then you get to search your library for a number of basic land cards equal to the other result and put them on the battlefield tap and shuffle. So that's mm -hmm. really handy. And you're rolling dice, which yeah. helps your commander. So. Our next section is removal. The formula that we use suggests that you should have around 15 removal cards. This deck has 11. Some of them are better than others, so you may be okay with this. The first one is Druid of Purification. For three in a green, you get a 2-3 Druid, uh, Human Druid, and when Druid of Purification enters the battlefield, starting with you, each player may choose an artifact or enchantment 
that you don't control and destroy each permanent chosen this way. So you're going to be uh, destroying a number of uh, artifacts or enchantments. It is a may, so each player may choose. So you're going to decide for yourself. You're probably going to have something you want to destroy. Your opponents may not choose anything, but they also will be able to read the board and see if there's someone that needs to be dealt with too. Uh -huh. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> Earth Cult Elemental. It's a 6-6 six, six for 4 and 2 red. Big Elemental Siege Monster. When it enters the battlefield, you roll the d20. And 1-9, to nine, each player has to sacrifice a permanent. 10-19, uh, to 19, each opponent sacrifices a permanent, not you. And at 20, each opponent sacrifices two permanents. So they are not going to want to see this thing come out at all. And it does the dice roll thing. Ping and make a dragon. Clothis's will. Choose one. If you control your commander as you cast this spell, you may choose both. So this has an X in its mana cost, which means X can be whichever you choose. You are going to have to pay two red and a green on top of that X. It has breathe flame, which means that it deals damage to each creature without flying. Um, and then smash relics, destroy up to X target artifacts or enchantments. So potentially a very big board wipe kill those things without flying the picture in this card says it all <laughs> definitely then we've got a land that we added to this um when we get to the land section we'll tell you a little bit about that but uh, this land in particular is the underdark drift Ri under dark rift and it taps for colorless mana but it also has this really nice removal piece on it so for five, you can uh, tap it and exile it and roll the d10. Put a target artifact creature or planeswalker into its owner's library just beneath the top X cards of that library where X is the result of that roll. So you have to do that as a sorcery, but it's a great removal card in itself just as a land that you can use. Mm -hmm. And Berserker's Frenzy is another one that we get to roll some dice and take advantage of our commander for two in uh, a red. It's an instant. You cast the spell only before combat in your turn. So in your, your first main phase, um, before blockers are declared. So, uh, so during combat. So you would go move to combat. You would declare your attackers and then you would cast this before blockers. Um, you're going to roll 2d20, so twice you can use your commander, and ignore the lower roll. So in D&D, &D, that's called disadvantage. Um, and then you're going to uh, choose one. Choose any number of creatures they block this turn of able, um, or choose which creature blocks this turn and how they they choose so uh potentially uh you're just going to be able to choose hey you didn't want to block with that but i'm going to make you block with it you get to choose or you can just decide you know what you're going to block with that uh remember though that your guys are flyers and you still have to follow the rules of attacking and blocking you can't just decide that someone on the ground can attack a flyer or block a flyer, block a flyer. All right, then we have Chain Reaction for two and two red. It's a sorcery that deals X damage to each creature where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. This can be crazy. Just a board wipe. Have lots of dragons. <laughs> Do your mouth. Don't want to kill all your dragons, too. No. <laughs> Magma Quake for X and two red is an instant, and it deals X damage to each creature without flying and each planeswalker. So potentially planeswalker removal for those super friends decks, as well as just again getting rid of those things that are sitting on the ground. <laughs> Spit flame for two and a red. This is one of Leslie's favorite cards, I think, back in the it day. Is. Still it is. Deals four damage to target creature at instant speed. And whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay red. If you do, you get to return Spit Flame from your graveyard to your hand. Mm -hmm. Very annoying. Just keeps coming back. It's so awesome. <laughs> and the four damage is great because a lot of things are, you know, they're either, it, they have to be fairly uh, high impact to, to be above four, but so. Yeah. 
Beast within for two and a green is an instant destroy target permanent is controller creates a three three green beast creature token and beast within is pretty much an auto include in any green commander deck and yeah. uh, I'm glad that they've included in with this because it's actually hard to find. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, return to nature, which isn't too hard to find, but it is also a pretty useful card for one and a uh, green. It's an instant that says you get to choose one. Destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or exile target cards from the graveyard. Before they bring it back, get rid yep. of it. <laughs> and the last one in our removal section is Warstorm Surge. It's an enchantment, so it stays on the battlefield for five in a red. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Could be their face, it could be their creature, but you're going to be playing some pretty big beefy dragons, and it'll be great to have that damage done. I have that card in my goblin deck. <laughs> oh, yes. It's great. Uh, the more goblins that come out, the more damage it does. Especially in there if they're buffed up, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, card draw, tutor's section is up next. And formula says 13 or so. There are nine in this deck that we could figure out here. So the first one being the Dragonborn Champion for two, a red and a green. It is a 5-3 with Trample. But whenever a sorcerer control deals five or more damage to a player, draw a card. So you're going to be drawing lots of cards with this one. They need to get rid of it. <laughs> for sure. Yep, definitely. And then Rickshaw's Expertise for four and two green is a sorcery. You get to draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control, which is potentially a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. And when you cast a card with converted mana cost five or less from your hand without paying its mana co cost after you've drawn. So you're going to fill up your hand and then you're going to uh, cast something for free. And that's a great little tutor card and draw. Yeah, so there's not a lot of uh, draw cards in this deck, but the ones that are here are, are crazy big. Yeah. Uh, Shamanic Revelation for three and two green. It's a sorcery that says draw a card for each creature you control. Awesome. And has Ferocious that says you gain four life for each creature you control with power four or greater. So it's really going to help you stay alive and continue mm -hmm. on with your crazy stay dragon alive. shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> and then explore uh this is a this is a fairly staple commander card but one in a green and when you play you may play an additional land this turn and you're just gonna draw a card um it's interesting because a lot of times you have to just play this card and draw you don't necessarily have any land in your hand but it's great early game when you have lots of land in your hand still so rampy rampy Return of the Wild Speaker for four and a green. It's an instant that lets you choose one draw card equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. Your dragons, you're going to draw some big, could potentially draw a lot of cards there. Or you can also use non-human creatures you control, get plus three, plus three until end of turn. And you can finish the game with this card for mm -hmm. sure. And Dragon Horde uh, is not a new card, but it fits really well within this deck. For three, it's an artifact, and when it enters the battlefield under your control, put a gold counter on Dragon's Horde. You can tap it to remove a gold counter from Dragon's Horde to draw a card, or you can tap it to add one mana of any color. So not only is it ramp, but it's continual card draw. Um, not continual, but yeah, basically you just kind of get to get to draw some cards it's great yeah you're, it's whenever a dragon comes in so every time yeah. you make those dragon tokens it's crazy yeah that's true so it is gonna just be continual card draw yeah well you have to tap it to get the card draw right oh, yeah. yeah but there's nothing wrong with that you've always got it available whenever you need a card i'm just gonna do that yeah Outpost Siege for three and a red enchantment when it enters the battlefield choose cons or dragons Cons is at the beginning of your upkeep. Exile the top card of your library until end of turn. You may play that card. Why not? Or dragons. Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. So you probably want to use it for the card draw aspect. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of crazy. And actually, mm -hmm. now that I'm, I'm going to go off topic again, Outpost mm -hmm. Siege would probably go well in playing your portal. Because of that, at the beginning mm -hmm. of your upkeep, up, exile the top card of your library. So every turn you're exiling something 
to potentially play it. So, anyways. Sure. Moving on, Colossal Majesty for two and a green. <laughs> this is another enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Heap if you control a creature with power four or greater, which you will, uh, you get to draw a card. So you're just gonna keep drawing cards. Again, the card draw that's in here, there isn't a lot, but the stuff that is is good. And Garuk's Uprising is a perfect, perfect card for this deck. Again, it's a two and a green and enchantment that says when it enters a battlefield, if you control a creature with power four or greater, you draw a card right away. Um, creatures you control have trample. So, yeah, um, you're getting tons of damage in, obviously, with all your big stuff. And whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. Every time you make one of those tokens, you draw a card. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> That's insane. Must yeah. Like. So you got to be careful because you don't want to deck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so gosh. now we move to our high impact cards. Uh, these are cards that are going to win you the game. They're going to work really well with your commander. They're just going to have really high synergy. Um, we recommend you have at least 12 in your deck. This deck, in our opinion, has about 16. So it has a lot of high impact stuff. Vengeful Ancestor is our first one for two and two red. It is a spirit dragon with flying. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you get to go to target creature. Goading is fantastic. Basically, they're going to have to attack with it the next turn, and they can't attack you. And then when a goaded creature attacks, it deals one damage to its controller. So there, you're just, I mean, the one damage is probably neg negligible, but uh, hey, it would be pretty <laughs> epic if it won you the game. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> uh, Never Winter Hydra for. 2x and 2 green it enters the battlefield or as it enters the battlefield you're going to roll a xd6 so whatever you make x you're going to roll that many d6 dice if it enters with a oh sorry it enters with a number of plus one counters on it equal to the total of those results the yeah. total oh my gosh and so it already has trample and it has four, four, which really means big. you can't touch it unless they pay four extra. Yeah. Ooh. Can you explain oh. XX? Because a lot of yes. newer players maybe don't understand XX. Yes. So if I'm choosing X as being three, then I have to pay three and three again, and then two green. So total would be six plus two is eight. So the total would be eight and X would be three. So then I would get to roll three D6. So that's how that works. You have to have that X twice in this case. Yeah. Bag of tricks. Everyone needs a bag of tricks for one and a green. So why is this artifact high impact? Well, for a few reasons. For four and a green, you can tap it and roll a D8. So you're triggering your commander. It works really well with that. And then you get to reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with mana value equal to the results. And it is a D8, so it's potentially up to eight mana cost. On average, it's gonna be around four. Uh, put that card onto the battlefield and the result or, and the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. It is playing your stuff for free. And anytime you can play a dragon for free, you win. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Nasty. Sword of Hours. It's a two mana cost equipment. And whenever equipped creature attacks, you get to put a counter on it. So stick that onto a dragon for two. It's equip cost is two and put counters on them. Whenever an equipped creature deals combat damage, you get to roll a d12. If the result is greater than the damage dealt or the result is 12, you get to double the number of plus one counters on that creature. That is going to go and win you the game. Yeah. And it triggers your commander and its yeah. counters so they stay on. Oh my God, that's ridiculous. <laughs> uh Bogarden Hellgu Hellkite for six and two red. So it is an eight mana cost five five. It does have flash though, which is fantastic. I love any time you can play a creature for for uh, an instant speed. Um, when it enters the battlefield, it deals five damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. So there's some potential removal there, or you can burn someone's face, or you can do all kinds of 
crazy things. Um, so this would be one that ultimately it fits in the removal, which again, we said only had 11 out of the 15, but it's also a high impact card. So some of these things kind of go in any category, but this one fits in lots in this deck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Dragon Master Outcast, what dragon deck would be a dragon deck without Dragon Master Outcast? And right? it's one, one for one human shaman at the beginning of your upkeep if you control six or more lands you create a five five red dragon creature token with flying <laughs> just just for being there mr outcast just for being there you're not a very nice guy <laughs> <laughs> ford smelter dragon for four and two red is a flying five five it has some uh removal on it as well you can pay four destroy target artifact and uh horde smelter dragon gets plus x plus zero until the end of turn where x is that artifact's mana value so um nice little turn that artifact into some dragon breath yeah and there's some removal right there too yeah right like there's another yet another removal uh, same with this next one, opportunistic dragon for two and a and two red. It's a four three flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, you choose a target human or artifact an opponent controls. For as long as the dragon is out there on the battlefield, you gain control of that, but it loses all abilities and can't attack or block. So mm -hmm. you just basically steal something and make it useless for them. <laughs> yeah, and for you. Yep. Scourge of Valkis for two and three red. So this has three red pips. Uh, you get a flying four, four. And uh, when Valkis or another dragon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals X damage to target creature or player where X is the number of dragons you control. Um, so that one will go really well for you. The more dragons that you do. And plus, remember, if, if you ping your commander, your another dragon is entering the battlefield and so you're just going to keep getting more and more dragons and doing more and more damage this guy has fire breathing as well so any of that extra red mana that you haven't used when you attack you can use the red mana to give it plus one plus zero until the end of turn for as many mana as you spend skyline despo uh, for five and two red to five five dragon that enters the battle when you enter the battle when it enters the battlefield you don't <laughs> you become the monarch though which means at the beginning of your upkeep uh if you're the monarch you get to put a five five red dragon creature token onto the battlefield um which is really going to help with a lot of things there as you've seen um and being the monarch means on the if you're still the monarch on your end step you get to draw a card so there's some card draw there too mm -hmm. and the only re way people can take that from you is if they deal damage to you so they will want to attack you. So don't yes. attack with everything. <laughs> Terror of Mount Velus, Velus uh, for five and two red is a five, five flying with double strike. And when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain double strike until the end of turn. So this is the potentially uh, a game winning. Um, if you have enough creatures on the battlefield, enough or dragons on the battlefield. Again, if you've saved those dragons up, before you attack, you can do some big shenanigans with them as long as nobody does a board wipe. So, you know, weigh your pros yeah. and cons there. <laughs> Thunderbreak region to 4-4 four, four for 2 and 2 red. Flying dragon. Whenever a dragon you control becomes the target of a spell or ability, an opponent controls Thunderbreak region deals 3 damage to that player. That can drain them as well. If they try to deal with your dragons, well, you're going to make them pay for that. Well, and what dragon deck would be a dragon deck without an Atarka, the world render, for five mm -hmm. and a green and a red for a six four? He's got flying, he's got trample, and whenever a dragon you control attacks, it gains <laughs> double strike until the end of turn. So, you know. Yeah. Speaking of double strike dragons. Yeah. <laughs> he becomes like 12. He's going to do 12 damage if he gets through because he's got trample. Ugh. Yeah. Not good. Savage Vent Ma, 4-4 four, four for 4 and a red and a green. Flyer, when it attacks, you add 6 mana, 3 red and th uh, 3 green. Until end of turn, you don't lose mana as steps and phases end. Ugh, you're going to have lots of extra mana going on with this deck. Yep. Yeah. 
And Decree of Savagery. This one is a great card. Um, at first glance, it doesn't look like a high impact card, but if you really think about it, seven and two green, um, you get to put four one one counters on each creature you control if you pay that. If for whatever reason you don't um, have enough card draw or you just need that, that draw, you can cycle it so you get card draw out of it. It does cost you six, but you still get to get four 1-1 one, one counters on a target creature. So not only do you get the card draw, you also get four 1-1 one, one counters. So uh, this has potential uh, death-defying feats happening. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if on the previous turn you did this thing, Kindred Summons, you get to an instant speed for five and two green. Choose a creature type, dragons. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards of the chosen type, where X is the number of creatures you control of that type. So it could be all those dragon tokens you made. Who cares? Um, put those cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle the rest of the revealed cards into your library. Great way to dig through and go and find all the rest of your dragons and finish the game next turn. Yeah, that's something that you're also going to want to kind of pay attention to as well um, because you don't want to just get two out of it. <laughs> I yes. mean, two is nice if you need it, but don't be desperate. Um. Yeah. <laughs> finish the game with that turn. Yeah. So now we move on to the last section, which is our other cards on theme or support cards. These are cards that are gonna help the rest of the cards in your deck or fill it out and just do the things that your commander needs to do. Um, Indomitable, My or sorry, the formula says that we should have around 10 of these. This deck we figured had around 14. This is also where you might tweak if you decided to. Indomitable Might for three and a, um, green is an enchantment aura. It has flash, so you can play it as, at into instant speed, which is great because you can use it as a combat trick. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three, and then uh, enchanted creature's controller may have it assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. So someone comes in, they try to block to kill your creature, bam, you give it plus three, plus three, and now it has this little uh, permanent plus three, plus three, uh -huh. and always assigns combat damage as though it weren't blocked. So yeah. that's nice. <laughs> yep. Um, barbarian class in this deck, this is going to be game ending as well. So for one red, you get this new enchantment out. These classes stay on the battlefield. They don't go away unless someone removes them. Um, so they just help you continue on. This one says when it first comes out, if you would roll one or more dice, Instead, you roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest roll. So you've got that advantage in the rolls. Or you can pay one in the red and get that plus on level two. You get whenever you roll one or more dice, target creature you control gets plus two and gains menace until the end of turn. So that could be bad for your opponents. Or simply for two and a red, your creatures also get haste. So they have menace and haste. And yeah. It yeah. could be crazy. And you're rolling extra dice, which helps your yes. commander. Yes. Wolfgar, the Ice Wind Dale. Uh, he just looks like a happy dude. I like him. Uh, for three and a red and a green, you get a 4-4 four, four with melee, which is whenever this creature attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn for each opponent you attacked this combat. So it's gonna encourage you to attack more than one person mm -hmm. and not just focus, which I always think is a great opportunity anyway. And if a creature you control attacking would cause a trigger, uh, a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that, uh, that ability triggers an additional time. So anything that says, you know, when this creature attacks, this happens, it's gonna happen twice. So you would get that melee twice then. Yep. Nice. Chaos Dragon for one and two red. It's a little 4-4 flying haste dragon. They're going to need to deal with that. It attacks each combat if able. So that's why it's not in the, uh, well, I guess it is. It's in high impact, right? Are we in high no, impact? No, no, we're in other, but it's a bit chaotic. Oh, right. It's, yeah, it's a bit chaotic. The, the last <laughs> bit is a bit chaotic. Yeah. 
So at the beginning of combat on your turn, each player rolls a d20. If one or more opponents had the highest result, Chaos Dragon can't attack those players or Planeswalkers they control this combat. So, yeah. So it's it's going to cause some chaos, but you're, you're going to be swinging. Who cares? Yeah. It may potentially, you know, be blocked by a Lyra or something like that, yeah. which would be unfortunate. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Maddening Hex is a one and two red enchantment aura it's a curse uh you get to enchant a player and whenever enchanted player casts a non-creature spell you get to roll a d6 maddening oh. hex deals damage to that player equal to the results and then attach maddening hex to another one of your opponents chosen at random <laughs> so lots of chaos happening with this it really takes advantage of that rolling dice every single time somebody casts a spell they might take some damage it might be one it might be six and it's just gonna uh nobody's gonna like this card on the battlefield but it's gonna be fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then here's a little removal dragon that uh for three and two red it's a five five with flying and when it enters a battlefield it deals five damage to a target opponent unless that player sacrifices a creature so it's either gonna remove a creature for you or deal five damage it's yeah mm -hmm. Very demanding. Very demanding. Shivan Hellkite for five and two red is another five five flyer. So you see how our other support cards or filler cards are pretty high impact in and of themselves. This one has uh, a pay two and Shivan Hellkite deals one damage to target creature or player. So it's a little different than fire breathing where you just buff it up. Instead, you're going to be using that mana that you have, that extra mana that you have to just do one damage or more to target yeah. creature or player. So it has kind of like, as Shauna likes to say, removal on a stick, um, just built into it. So uh, then you have Skyship Stalker, which is another similar sort of thing. It's uh, a three, three for two and two red, a little flying dragon that you can pay a red and give it plus one plus zero until end of turn. You can give it first strike with another red mana. You can give it haste if you want to. Um, you've got all that extra mana that you've been generating and that doesn't leave uh, your your combat steps and stuff. So use it for those kind of things. It's going to be mean for sure. Yep. And Torin Mauler is our first non-dragon other card. Oh. Or is it? Is this it? is a 2-2 two, two for 3. It is a changeling, which means that this card is every creature type. So guess what? It is a dragon. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may put a 1-1 one, one counter on Torin Mauler. So he is just a nice oh. little dude that is also a dragon. And he's just going to keep getting so. bigger as people cast spells. Yeah. It's so mean. Not as bad as the Scorching Dragon. <laughs> the Chameleon Colossus here, it has some interesting art. It's a 4-4 four, four for 2 and 2 green. It is a little shapeshifter as well, so it is a dragon as well. And it has protection from black, so that's going to really come in handy, playing against these darn zombies or something like that. Um, then you can pay that 2 and 2 green to give it plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is its power. So it's a 4-4, four, four. you're going to pay another, you pay that 4 back into it, it becomes a 8-8. Eight, eight. You could do that again if you happen to have 4 more mana, so then it would become a 16-16, sixteen, sixteen, and so on. Yeah. And if you have that trample thing out there, that little Colossus could do some work for you. For sure. Or they're playing mono black. Yeah. <laughs> and even remotely, protection means they can't block. Mm -hmm. with black mm -hmm. doesn't even affect you at all so anger is our next one it is a creature uh for three and a red it's a little two two um with haste and as long as anger is in your graveyard and you control a mountain creatures you control have haste so this guy he's meant to just swing in get him in your graveyard people are either not going to want to block him because they don't want to give all your creatures haste so you can just get in with two ping 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 or they're going to block them and suddenly all your dragons have haste. So he's perfect. 
Then we've got this little Ryle card. It's a sorcery for one that lets you deal one damage to target creature you control. Ping your commander. There you go. That creature gains trample until end of turn. Nasty. And then you can draw a card. So they're going to need to deal with that. Yeah. Unfortunately. And I love me some heirloom uh, blade for three. It's an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus three plus one. And when equipped creature dies, you may reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card that shares a creature type with it. Put that card into your hand and the rest at the bottom of your library in random order. So, hey, he dies and he's just going to birth something into your hand that you can cast the next turn. <laughs> Why not, hey? Then we have gratuitous violence. <laughs> This deck is about lots of violence. Two and three red. It's an enchantment that says if a creature you control would deal damage to a creature or player, it deals double that damage to that creature or player instead. End of game. End of game. <laughs> and as we talked about uh, land, we're not going to spend a lot of time going through each of the lands. It has a fairly basic land base. You can tweak your lands up and down. Of course, uh, land is often the most expensive thing in Magic, and there are some great lands out there, so you can feel free to upgrade that however much your budget will allow. Um, or you can just keep it the same, because there's nothing wrong with the base as it is. So check that out as well. But we are going to move straight into our <laughs> tweaks. And uh, these are cards that we think you might want to add to your deck. Um they are not the only cards you can add. Of course, there are a lot of dragon decks out there, a lot of dragon deck lists. You can take a look at those. These are just ones that we found that we thought might up the ante in this deck a little bit more. And uh, so, Shauna, what's our first one? Our first one is Blind Blast for two and a red. It's an instant that deals one damage to target creature. That creature can't block this turn, and, and then you can draw a card. So this is a great way to... Trigger your commander kind of whenever you want to on the end step of the other person maybe and draw a card. Uh, it's basically just to get a dragon token and to draw a card at the same time. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. And another we were thinking that perhaps you needed some more ways to trigger your commander and Chandra's Pyrohelix also does this. Uh, so for one and a red, it does two damage divided as you choose among uh among one or two targets so you can do two to something or one to two different things and so that's a, just another way to ping and uh do some damage to your commander if you need then the raging sword tooth uh it's a good dinosaur from Exalan that is a five five for three a red and a green it can be removal for you it can ping your commander it has trample and when it enters the battlefield it deals one damage to each other creature so it's going to potentially board wipe some of those tokens stuff like that so yeah it's a really great little addition to this deck i think yeah and we also saw that there was a hydra in this deck and we thought apocalypse hydra might be another option for you for x and a red and a green we have a hydra that enters the battlefield with x11 counters on it if x is five or more it enters the battlefield with an additional x counters on it so you definitely want to pay at least five into this and then mm -hmm. you can pay one and a red to remove a counter from it and do one damage to any target so if you get this on the battlefield now you can continually remove counters from it and do one damage to your commander so this might be a really great option for this deck yeah then we have acorn catapult which is a artifact for four that you can pay one and tap it and deal one damage to target creature or player so again if you want to deal that to your commander it's a great way to do that and then that creature's controller or that player puts a little one one green squirrel onto the battlefield so you get a little blocker something like that too so it's kind of fun yeah get the and dragon and the squirrel yeah exactly <laughs> and i mean as we said in the other you're not going to take all of the cards out and put all of these little pingers in yeah. there but another option for you is pathway arrows for one you can equip a creature and uh 
pay two and tap it, and this creature deals one damage to target creature. If a colorless creature is dealt damage this way, tap it. Um, of course, you would use this to ping your own commander. So put that on one of your squirrels and do one damage to it. Create a big dragon. And uh, if all your stuff has hay, swing in with it and do your best. Exactly. Uh, Koth of the Hammer. This is a cool little planeswalker that I hadn't seen before. It is uh, for two and two red, three loyalty uh, planeswalker that says you can plus one untap target mountain. It becomes a four, four red elemental creature until end of turn. It's still a land, so that's really handy. Or you can do minus two and add red to your mana pool for each mountain you control. That will be really helpful for that whole ramping thing. Um, or you can get to minus five where you get an emblem with mountains you control have tap it and deals one damage to target creature or player. Easy thing to fire off your commander as yeah. well. Or just tap all your mana and removal too. So it's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, silver clad ferocidon if you do decide to add more pingers to this deck you may want to have other things to ping um so enrage is definitely something that you could add to this deck of course you don't sure. want to change it too much the the point is dragon beat down but we thought this little eight five was worthy of mention for five and two red you get a dinosaur with enrage um and when it's dealt damage, each opponent sacrifices a permanent. So if you're going to just ping things anyway, you might as well get some removal out of it as well as an 8-5. So. Yeah. Uh, then we've got a little sorcery called Arc Lightning that's for two and a red. It deals three damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three target creatures and or players. It's just another way to ping, 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 ping. Yeah. And Magic Missiles, again, another little versatile, potentially pinging spell. It can't be countered, which is great. And Magic Missile de deals three damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three targets. So you can uh, divide that up if need be. Uh, we were also thinking, and we won't kind of go into all of the potential options, but this deck is a little low on ramp. Um, so maybe adding some mana dorks or, you know, making sure you still keep those 39 lands in here would be a good option for you. Of course, there's a lot of dragon options. I don't know. I mean, Terror of the Peaks uh, would also get you some damage. That's a really good kind of card there's glory bringer uh which is also another great dragon card uh so i mean just search for dragons on scryfall and pick the ones you mm -hmm. like that are in the colors there's lots out there um and then the other thing we didn't really talk about which actually goes with this that we didn't put tweaks on but there's lots of cards out there that make you roll a dice so if you wanted to stay mm -hmm. with the adventures of the forgotten realms cards they're coming out new you'll be able to they're they're going to be accessible and easy to find just add some more things that let you roll dice which will ultimately sure. make the the game a little bit more fun for you and do some pinging at the same time so fun fun yeah i like it so that's it for this time we hope you have a great time playing this deck and and uh, let us know how you would tweak it and what what you did and how successful you were with it and also if you like what you saw we uh, make sure to hit that subscribe and like button down there and help us out there and you can also find us live on twitch hang out with us three times a week coffee and magic it's always a good thing and you can also find us on Twitter and say hi to us there. So come on out. And until next time, tap those magic cards and have fun doing it. See you later, guys. Bye.